Welcome back. It's American Heroes Week, and we are spotlighting military veterans who put their lives on the line for our freedom. Unfortunately, time off the battlefield can be just as jarring as on it. 20 U.S. military veterans die every day of suicide. That's according to statistics from the Veterans Affairs Office. President Trump has signed an executive order mandating a Veteran Suicide Prevention Task Force. It's called PREVENT, and it's the latest effort to combat the alarming level of suicides among veterans and active duty members of the military. Washington reporter Eva McKind spoke to one veteran impacted by this crisis. First, it was her friend, First Lieutenant David Remick. He was very successful. He was strong in his faith, strong in his family. He had a support system. He had everything that you would need to, to prevent something like this. Then, just about a year after Remick took his own life, another friend, Captain Garrett Woodcock, did too. She remembers sitting next to Woodcock at Remick's funeral. It's heartbreaking, especially when it's somebody that you, you think you know and that you would never think of. For more than a decade, Maggie Seymour was an active duty Marine, at times deployed to Iraq, Afghanistan, and Kuwait. You'll never see a prouder Marine than when they figure something out with duct tape and, you know, Constantiner wire. She says when talking about suicide among veterans and active duty members of the military, it's crucial to call out the underlying issues. What are all the things that happen before suicide? War, combat, deployments, deployment stress, transition stress, all those things happen before a suicide. And I, I don't think that we are at a point where we're addressing those honestly uh, and openly. In addition to a recent executive order from President Trump, a host of initiatives have formed over the years to address service member suicides. The Department of Veterans Affairs says the number of people taking their own life is not on the rise, but the data shows it isn't falling either. There are 20 suicide deaths every day among veterans. Of the 20, six are typically receiving treatment through the VA before their death, while 14 are not. Wendy Laxo is the VA's acting deputy director for suicide prevention. If anybody is in crisis, any veteran in crisis, um, they can walk through our doors and get help immediately. We've also opened the doors to those that have um, other than honorable discharge. The VA tells me that their strategy on this issue has evolved over time and that they have to speak to many different demographics. It's a lot different speaking with somebody who's a male over 70 years old than it is uh, for a male or female who is 18 years old. Peer support works and we are encouraging peer support within our veteran population. Other initiatives include the Mayor and Governor's Challenge and the Be There social media campaign. In Quantico, Eva McKend, Spectrum News. Joining us now is Ovi Rivera, a retired Master Sergeant in the Army who's now working as the Outreach Director at the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic in Colleen. Welcome to In Focus. Texas. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We are so happy to have you here. So much to talk about on this topic of veterans mental health. We just watched a piece about veteran suicide. If this strikes home for you. You can relate to the struggles of the men in that story, right? I can, that's correct. Talk a little bit about your experience. You know, nothing, even though you get a lot of training, nothing really prepares you until you are there. And as I explained to a lot of people, once you hear the first boom is, and you know it's not a movie, and that's when reality hits you. Mm -hmm. And all sorts of things are going through your head, whether you even gonna make it back for R&R &R to even see your kids again. And that tension, you know, it, it multiplies for an entire year, so you don't know what's gonna happen next. Mm. And it's, it's, I was grateful, I will do it all over again, because I, I believe in what I was doing. But the tension alone is, 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 is one of the reasons that, that you know, you, that's your new normal. Yeah. And then you have to come back and, and adjust to the other new normal when you, get, when you return. And what's it been like since you've been back? How was the adjustment to civilian life and did you hit a low point? I did. In 2011 is when I hit a, what I call, it was the low point. It was I was in a very dark place. Uh, is what I what I said when everything stopped I knew something was different uh, I went almost 10 years prior to my retirement uh, with the up tempo uh, non-stop I was a I was an army drill sergeant straight from drill sergeant which is a high stress uh, uh, tour I went to Iraq I came back from Iraq and I was selected to attend recruiting school which was another 
high straight hardship tour. Came off recruiting straight to Afghanistan. So when everything stopped in 2011, I was in a very dark place. And I just didn't know what was, what was going on. And that's when I saw help. And talk to me first about what was different. How did you recognize that you were in a dark place? Because there could be people who are watching who may feel that but can't connect it to actual symptoms. What were you experiencing? Yeah, like, like many veterans, I, uh, I was, was hypervigilant. Okay. I was, and when I was inside my house, uh, prior to even going to sleep, I was checking my own perimeter to make sure mm -hmm. everything was safe. Uh, I saw everything as a threat. Uh, anywhere I went, whether it was Walmart, the movie theater, everything, I was, I was checking my surroundings, and it was, it was a little too much. I was getting angry at everything, uh, and like many veterans, uh, I was thinking nothing's wrong with me. Or there's nothing, it's just, it's just been in the military. And it actually took my wife to tell me, because she recognized the change immediately, to tell me you need to see someone okay. because you are not the same. Is that when you got connected to the Cohen Military Family Clinic? No, not there. Mm -hmm. That's when I actually went and saw help okay. before I even retired. I went to see an LCSW on post, and she was the one to help me find my footing. Uh, you know, she used evidence-based therapy, the same type of therapy as evidence-based that we use at our clinics. But I was already retired. I was in graduate school pursuing a second master's degree when I seen the position open for the, uh, for the outreach. Mm -hmm. And I read the mission statement, and it was like it was talking to me. I said, you know what? This is, this is what I need to be doing. Uh, my master's degree is in computers, but I'm doing something totally different. Okay. But this is, this is my calling. I'm helping others to, to go and seek help just like I did. Talk to me about the services that are offered at the clinic. Yes, we offer uh, mental health care for veterans and their families for PTSD, anxiety, depression, anger, transitional issues, uh, relationship issues, child behavior issues. So the whole gamut, you know, of mental health services, and that's so beneficial, and it must be so helpful for those who are in the military or are veterans to see that they have a place that they can go to as soon as they need that care and there are qualified people to help them. So we appreciate your being here, sharing your personal story, um, and also sharing a resource for those who need it. Coming up next, our one-on-one -on -one with Jordan Klepper. The comedian has a new docu-series out that brought him to the Lone Star State. Hear more about these veterans who are literally wrestling with PTSD.